Hello everyone. There are a number of liturgical practices that have disappeared from use over the decades. One of the practices was that the priest faced the same direction as the people while celebrating Holy Mass. But with the introduction of the Tridentine or Roman Rite Mass in the early 1970s, the priest is required to face the people. Although the change has had many positive effects, there has also been a significant negative impact on our faith. I would like to point out two effects of the change. One, more often during Holy Mass, we appear to be engaged in a conversation about God rather than in the worship of God. Two, the altar and the cross above it seem to have lost much of their significance because the change has placed an inordinate importance on the personality of the celebrant of the Holy Mass. We easily forget that the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross is the focal point of salvation and of the liturgical action. Today, as we celebrate the feast of the exaltation of the cross, I invite all of you to look at the cross or crucifix in the church. What does the cross mean to you? For Jews, the cross was the symbol of oppression and death because the ancient Romans used to execute most of their criminals by hanging them on a cross. But the cross took a new meaning after the death of Jesus on it. Today. The cross is the most familiar and widely recognized symbol of the Christian faith. It is loved and respected by millions of people. It is found on paintings, statues, jewelry and so on. It is placed on the top of the buildings as a reminder of the presence of Christians. Some people wear one around their neck as a declaration of their faith in Jesus Christ. The Catholic cross is a crucifix with Jesus' crucified body on it to remind us of his suffering. Protestant Christians display the empty cross emphasizing the resurrection of Christ. Many other Christian groups associate the cross with the exhortations of Jesus such as, If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. The cross is also manifested in physical gestures. We begin and end our prayers with the sign of the cross. Some of us make the sign of the cross when getting up in the morning, before leaving the house for work, before driving, when passing a church or a cemetery, upon entering a church, after receiving communion, and in times of trouble or fear or temptation. Just before the reading of the Gospel at Holy Mass, we trace three small crosses with the right thumb, one on the forehead, one on the lips, and one on the heart. Another sign is the large sign made by bishops and priests when blessing persons or religious objects. Friends, whether you use your cross or crucifix in your worship or wear it around your neck, or place it in your house as a declaration of your faith, or trace the cross on your body, the question I pose to you today is, do you understand the primary importance and value of the cross? In this world, many people despise the cross of Jesus Christ. They think the message of the cross is foolishness. This is because the cross is just seen as a stark reminder of betrayal, denial, humiliation, pain, suffering, loneliness, sin, guilt and shame. However, the same cross is precious because it is on which Jesus shed his blood for our sins. The Bible teaches us that Jesus humbly laid down his life for us and paid the bitter penalty for our sins. By his death on the cross, Jesus atoned for our sins so that God could be satisfied 
and reconciliation between God and us could be achieved. By his dying on the cross, Jesus paid the essential ransom price to buy us back and set us free from our slavery to sin. When he died on the cross, Jesus bought us forgiveness. Friends, today we have an opportunity to look at the cross of Christ and see what God wants us to see. God wants us to see the demonstration of his great love for you and me. He wants us to see the cross of Christ not as a symbol of a tragedy that should have been avoided but as a symbol of his great wisdom and power to save us from our sins. However, only seeing what God wants us to see is not enough. When we look at the cross of Christ, we also need to do what God wants us to do. God wants us to repent of our sins and receive his free gift of salvation. Let us always humbly and gratefully come to the cross of Christ, which instruments forgiveness for our sins and promises the everlasting life. Just as the people of Israel who looked at the bronze serpent mounted on a pole lived, let us keep our eyes on the cross of Christ and gratefully reflect on his love for us so that we too may live forever. Amen. God bless you.